Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm your host, Dane of the Rock and Middle Guardian. Hope you're doing well wherever you may be. Today's episode is called The Kiss Alive Effect. Bands and artists whose best album is a live album. And it is a ranking, so it's 25, counting down from 25 to number one. So let's dive right in. Coming in at number 25 is One Live Badger from the band Badger, Tony K, formerly of Yes. You have six songs. It's Prog Rock, of course, Wheel of Fortune, Fountain, Wind of Change, River, The Preacher, and On the Way Home. This is odd because it's their first album. How many bands can you think of, rhetorical question, whose first album is a live album? Not many, right? And love the artwork here. Roger Dean, of course, and you can see his imprint because of the little airship here. And... It opens up like this. You got the badger thing there, the logo, and then you have the musicians. Here's Tony K. This is an underrated gem, if you ask me. So if you're not familiar with this, give it a listen. Again, one live badger by Badger. It's unfortunately that they didn't have much after this. the The album that pres that follows this is a studio album, and it pales in comparison to how great this is. All right, number twenty four is live dates from Wishbone Ash. Now, there are three volumes, so I'm talking about the first volume, volume one, and I'm going to talk about, for, for most, if not all of these albums, the standout tracks here, and the standout tracks for um, live dates by Wishbone Ash is the first three start off. Those are just fabulous. Great great way to, to, to hit you over the head and grab your attention. They are The King Will Come, Warrior, and Throw Down the Sword, and later on, other tracks that I just love are The Pilgrim and Jailbait. And then the two that are also just amazing are the last two songs, Lady Whiskey and then especially the closing track, Phoenix. That's right, Phoenix. For me, this is the definitive version, 17 minutes and 12 seconds long. It's amazing. So Wishbone Ash coming in at number 24. Next is Jethro Tull's Bursting Out. And this was recorded during the Heavy Horses tour. And a good friend of mine, his dad has seen Jethro Tull probably 20-something times, and he said he would go to see them all the time in the 70s and travel in his Winnebago and that sort of thing. And he said this was their go-to set list for, for too long. Um, anyway, it's still a great album, and the standout tracks for me here are Skating Away on the Thin Ice of a New Day. The Next is the um, medley of flute solo improvisation, and then God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. That's, a, again, those three tracks are actually a medley as one track. Then Songs from the Wood, Thick as a Brick, Minstrel in the Gallery here is Top Notch, Cross-Eyed Mary, the um, instrumental quatrain, Aqualong, and, of course, Locomotive Breath. So Jethro Tull bursting out number 23. Next is 22, Peter Gabriel plays live. <coughs> Excuse me. And for me, as much as I love his first four albums, and some of the later stuff to follow. Not much of that, but... <coughs> excuse me, I still haven't heard his new album. Um, but for me, this is where it's at. Just amazing. And the songs that stand out for me the most are The Rhythm of the Heat, Family Snapshot, Intruder, San Jacinto, excuse me, San Jacinto, my favorite song by him, Salisbury Hill, such moving song. Um, San Jacinto, that is. Salisbury Hill is also quite moving. And um, my second favorite song, Shock the Monkey. The whole album's great from start to finish. Although, I wouldn't have ended with Biko. I would have ended with either Shock the Monkey or... I, actually, I would have ended the album with San Jacinto. Because it's my favorite song. So I'm biased here. And of course, the album cover has him in his paint from his Genesis days. Um, dressing himself or painting himself to look like that Greek hoplite warrior with that helmet, right? Um, it's just great. So Peter Gabriel plays live 22. 21 is Ted Nugent's double live Gonzo. And the standout tracks for me here are Gonzo, the Amboy Duke song, Baby, Please Don't Go, Great White Buffalo, Hibernation is Fabulous, Stranglehold, Wang Dang, Sweet, Fill in the Blank, the intro was just humorous and funny, calling it a love song, right? Cat Scratch Fever and the closer, Motor City Madness. Uh, this is an album that for the longest time was just, you know, average, okay. And then in the last couple of years, last year and a half, it's really become one of my favorite live albums of all time. Um, anyway, so next is Welcome Back, My Friends, to the show that never ends by... Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer, number 20. 
And the standout tracks here are Tarkus, of course, in its entirety. Then you have a medley of Take a Pebble, Still You Turn Me On, and Lucky Man. Excuse me. And then it goes into a piano improvisation uh, that has a fugue in it, which is quite nice. And then that ends, and then the conclusion to Take a Pebble uh, follows that up. And then, of course, you have um, Carnival, first, second, and third impression. So the whole um, magnum opus part from... Uh, brain salad surgery, which is amazing. And the first impression is my favorite. Next is number 19, Peter Frampton Comes Alive. One of my day, my, one of my dad's favorite albums of all time. He played us all the time when I was a kid growing up. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six standout tracks for me personally, the ones that I like the best, and they're all cliche, go figure, and they are Show Me The Way, It's A Plain Shame, Baby I Love Your Way, Shine On, The Humble Pies Song, um, Lines on My Face, I just love that song, and of course my favorite, like so many of us, the 14 and change, 14 minute and change song, Do You Feel Like We Do, great song. All right, so that was number 19. Number 18 is Paul McCartney and Wings, Wings Over America, the triple album, and the standout tracks for me here are both solo, Wings, and Beatles songs. Venus and Mars, Rock Show Jet, the, the medley that opens the album, Maybe I'm Amazed, Live and Let Die, Bluebird, I've Just Seen a Face, great, great version, Blackbird, Yesterday, great version, My Love, Band on the Run, Lady Madonna, and The Long and Winding Road. Uh, this, is a, this is a phenomenal album, great, one of the greatest live albums, definitely top 100 of all time. Uh, okay, next is Live Bullet from Bob Seger. As much as I love Nine Tonight, this is my favorite. This is, I think, his definitive live album. You get Nutbush City Limits, Traveling Man, Beautiful Loser. Other songs that I like that stand out, I've Been Working. Of course, Turn the Page, my favorite. It's cliched, but hey. Ramblin' Gamblin' Man from his first album. Heavy Music is amazing. Catman Do is on fire here. Get Out of Denver, Let It Rock. And you have the bonus track, which I'm quite fond of. I Feel Like Breaking Up Somebody's Home, a song about adultery. All right. Next is... Hanoi Roxas, number 16, All Those Wasted Years, Live at the Marquee. Standout tracks for me. There are a few. There are 18 in all, but here's the, here are the ones that are, and I love them all, but here are the ones that stand out to me the most. The most. Lightning Bar Blues, Don't Never Leave Me, Beer and Cigarette, Train Kept the Rolling, great version, Under My Wheels, great version, Lost in the City, 11th Street Kids, Malibu Beach Nightmare, I Feel All Right, and Taxi Driver. Great, great live album. Number 15, Cheap Trick, two CD version of Live at Budokan. Got to get the two CD version. And what can you say about songs that are, for many of us, the definitive versions on the live album? And those are Come On, Come On, Oh Carolyn, Surrender, Southern Girls, I Want You to Want Me, Ain't That a Shame, the um, cover song, a Fats Domino, and the amazing version of Clock Strikes 10, which is phenomenal. So Cheap Trick, Live at Budokan, the two-CD version, coming in at number 15. Number 14, just got this in, Decade of Aggression by Slayer. This is something I've been trying to track down for the longest time. It got the, the Japanese version, as you can see. Greatest Hits Live, to me, this is their best album. Again, the, the theme is they pulled a kiss, right? Or a Peter Frampton or etc. For me personally, I would say Kiss and Peter Frampton are the ones that come to mind the most for most people, but I could be wrong anyway. So that's what I mean by that. Number 13 is the remix version, Space Ritual from Hawkwind. This is just nostalgic. It's glorious. It's wonderful. Great from start to finish. Uh, Space is Deep, The Black Corridor, Lord of Light, The Awakening, Down Through the Night, 10 Seconds of Forever, Brainstorm, Sonic Attack, Master of the Universe, Welcome to the Future, You Shouldn't Do That. There are some other songs here, but man, this is great. And if you haven't heard this remix, I highly recommend it. And it's only after their first two albums that they do a live album, but hey, it works. It's fabulous. Their best album, if you ask me. Next is Live at the Royal Albert Hall, 2005, from Cream. 
And let's see, did I write some songs down that I wanted to talk about? No, it's just great from start to finish. Um, they never sounded better, uh, considering it's, you know, so late in their career, 2005, a big band in the 70s, reuniting for this one show. Oh, it's just great. I, it, For me, it's their best album. Okay. Next, this might surprise some people, Roger Waters' best album is, of course, his rendition of The Wall. He have a, a song on here that's not on the original, which is the ballad of Jean-Charles de Men- Menez, him talking about something that happened in history, um, some injustice to this individual. I don't remember the whole story behind it. It's been a while since I looked it up, but I, I like it quite a bit. This this is phenomenal. And if, I have the DVD as well, the Blu-ray as well, which is quite good, which is uh, all the songs here and got some document, doc, documentary footage in between songs as he's talking about his life and losing his father and all this. Is, this, is, this is amazing. All right. So that was number 11. Number 10 is the Who 2 DC two CD version of Live at Leeds because you get on disc two most, if not all, of Tommy, the concept album, side, side one, Heaven and Hell, I Can't Explain, Young Man Blues, perhaps my favorite early, um, who, it is my er, favorite early Who song, if not my favorite Who song of all time, Substitute, Happy Jack, I'm a Boy, a quick one while, she, while he's away, what's that, Pete? Love that, it's so funny. Um, if you've listened to this album, you know what I'm talking about. Summertime Blue, Shaking All Over, 15 Minutes and Change of My Generation, and then Magic Bus. This is, that's side one, so I went backwards. Did disc one first, disc two first, and disc one. Got to get the two, two CD version. It's where it's at. Next, number nine, The Truth, The Whole Truth, and Nothing But The Truth from Ian Hunter. This is just fabulous. He's got songs from both Mott the Hoople and his solo stuff. This is this is just amazing. I cannot talk this up enough. I still haven't opened it yet, um, but I will. And I've heard this many, many times. I have it in MP3 format. If you're a Mott the Hoople fan and an Ian Hunter fan or both or one, you got to get this. This is great. All right. Th- these are all great albums. All right. Number eight, no surprise, at the Fillmore Almond Brothers. This is the complete version, the two CD version. You have to get this both side one. Disc one, excuse me, has tracks that didn't make the original vinyl in disc two as well. This is amazing. If you're an Almond Brothers fan, you know how good this is. Um, this explains why Dwayne Almond was a genius. All right. Now, coming in at number seven, a childhood favorite. This, to me, is their best album. Two for the Show by Kansas. Rich Williams and Kerry Livgren on guitar have never sounded better. In fact, the whole band have never sounded better. As great as the studio stuff is, this is phenomenal. You have some great photos here. I've talked about this album before on this channel. This is amazing. I love it. And then I closed it wrong. So you have... A CD, you have a disc too here with some songs that they played in different, um, depending on where they were touring, I mean, what dates they were playing. Um, I love the fact that it ends with Magnum Opus. I saw them live when I was 15. They opened up for Heart. It, I still remember the concert like it was yesterday, sort of. Um, I, uh, man, I, my first concert was a doozy, right? Heart in Kansas. Wow. Um, and Magnum Opus is, this is my favorite version of Magnum Opus, that instrumental. Um, it's just great. And then D- CD2 has um, Hopelessly Human, Child of Innocence, Balexi, Shan Anthem, Cheyenne, excuse me, Lonely Street is Amazing, Miracles Out of Nowhere, A Drum Solo, The Spider, Closet Chronicles, Down the Road, Sparks of the Tempest, wow, and Bringing It Back. This is amazing. Have to get this if you don't have it. All right, so Kansas. Two for the show. Number six, Grand Funk Railroad's live album. Now, there are two other live albums, live albums that they have, and I love them, but I especially love this one. This, to me, is their favorite album. Introduction, Are You Ready? Paranoid, In Need, Heartbreaker, Words of Wisdom, Mean Mistreater, Mark Says All Right, TNUC, Inside Looking Out, and Into the Sun. Those last two songs are drive, drive it all home for you, right? Now, what would be awesome if you had all this plus we're an American band, but oh well, 
This is my favorite by them. All right. Next, so that was number six. Number five is Rockin' the Fillmore from Humble Pie. You only get six, oops, let's see. You only get seven songs, even though it's originally a double live album on vinyl. You get Four Day Creep, I'm Ready, Stone Cold Fever. I Walk on Gilded Splinters, 23 minutes and 25 seconds is fantastic. Rolling Stone, 16 and change. Hallelujah, I Love Her So, a short 510. And then, of course, I Don't Need No Doctor, 9 minutes, 15 seconds. Do I need to say more? Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. All right, I said more. <laughs> All right, it's great when music can pump you up and get you excited. Number four, Live at the Rainbow, 74, Sheer Heart Attack Tour by Queen. This is a two-CD set. The, that's the second CD. The first CD is Queen, Live at the Rainbow, March 74, the Queen 2 tour. Sheer Heart, uh, it's great, but the Sheer Heart Attack Tour is even better. I like Live at the Odeon, but this is this is where it's at. Best Queen album for me now, is no longer Sheer Heart Attack, but this live album, Sheer Heart Attack Tour 74, Disc 2. All right. Number three. My favorite studio album by this band is called Relayer. And for the longest time, that was my favorite album. But hey, this is my favorite album by Yes. So Relayer is number two. Of course, unfortunately, um, Gates of Delirium is not on here. You can get that on Yes Shows, which is great. This is phenomenal. The people complain about the production. I don't have much of a problem with it. I love this album. Comes in at number three. Number two, Live After Death, Iron Maiden. Greatest Hits Live, right? What an intro, Churchill speech. Um, one of my students asked me the other day, because I teach U.S. history, one, two sections of that, and but I'm mostly an English teacher, and one of my English students asked me the other day, it's like, you're familiar with Churchill's speech? I was like, oh, yeah, and I mentioned this. He's not a heavy metal person, but... Um, and, of course, it launches into the wonderful Aces High. Two Minutes to Midnight, The Trooper. Just This is just fabulous. This is, you know, this is where it's at for me. Sorry, you don't know, but it's for me. Um, and, well, my favorite studio album is Peace of Mind. This has to be, for me, my favorite album by them. Again, hence the theme of the title of today's episode. This is to Kiss. This is to Iron Maiden what Kiss Alive is to Kiss. So, of course, my number one is going to be Kiss Alive. Definitely another, all of these are great from start to finish. Do Strutter, Got to Choose. You know the list, right? Would I have liked them to end Rock and Roll All Night and put Let Me Go Rock and Roll in front of it? Yeah, it's all right. This is, this is what got me started into moving away from pop music to hard rock and, and heavier music as a nine-year-old in third grade. This is where it began, folks. This is the starter kit for so many of us, right? Anyway, please post in your comments what you think of my selections and post your own list if you'd like to. Have a blessed day. See you soon. Bye now. Take care.